And you told me you gave me a 10 o'clock curfew. After the 10 o'clock, you get an alarm on. I can't, I can't go outside. Jimmy Gardner sits by his mama in South Georgia, laughing about her strict rules. This was his room. This was his room. She wouldn't give him a door to his bedroom or even a key to the house. I'll tell you, that was challenging. It's the kind of squabbles you expect with a teen, except Gardner wasn't a teen at the time. He was 50 years old. They didn't, they didn't know my, my evolution. They didn't know me as a man. That's because Gardner became a man in prison. He was only 20 when the police in West Virginia questioned him about two sexual assaults. Gardner, a young, ambitious baseball player, says he was actually on the mound pitching during one of the attacks. At the time these crimes were committed, I was in Charleston, West Virginia. I was playing for the Charleston Wheelers, and this was the Sally League. But the state's chief blood analyst testified Gardner's DNA was a close match. While in prison, that analyst came under fire for a pattern of falsifying information. All of his cases came into question. Still, it took another 22 years for a federal judge to consider the real lab results, tests that actually excluded Gardner as a suspect. I don't think that any human being should spend one second in a jail if that person is not justly convicted. It's stories like Gardner's that led Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard to create Georgia's first conviction integrity unit. We'll take the elevator up one floor. And he's hired Amy Maxwell, who used to lead the Georgia Innocence Project, to review the petitions filed, claiming the criminal justice system made a mistake. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of integrity for an elected official to look at his own decisions um, to make sure that justice was done. Are you ready to look at him and say, I think you made a mistake? I am. I am. That's my job. That's why he hired me. In her first five months on the job, Maxwell has received 62 petitions. Those boxes uh, represent three cases that I'm working on. 31 of those from defendants who say they are innocent. How do you even look at these cases and sort fact from fiction? Well, you know, it is a difficult process. We can't just look at what someone says, nor can we just look at our file. We're going to have to basically reinvestigate these cases. These are serious offenses. 23 involve murder, 12 armed robberies, 4 rapes, there is kidnapping and child molestation. Defense attorneys submitted most of the petitions, but 18 came directly from the accused. Gardner is not surprised. How many letters? How many petitions? Oh, Who talking, did you write? You're talking hundreds. I've written, I've written um, ACLU. I've written organizations. I've written NAACP, Action Network. I've written lawyers. I've written um, congressmen, congresswomen, senators. I've written the presidents, plural. What are some of the concerns or issues that are being raised with these cases? There are things like witnesses that were never interviewed or um, an alibi that nobody checked on, including the defense lawyer. Since Howard became the DA in 1997, four people have had their convictions overturned. DNA exonerated one man. The other three won new trials because prosecutors presented inappropriate or false information. Howard says in a double murder case, his office learned after the trial the key witness was in jail at the time of the crime. When I confronted him, he admitted that he lied. There are believed to be 36 conviction integrity units across the country, but Gardner wants more. He never had a DA like Howard willing to give his case a second look. This is where I pray. I go in my closet and I close this door. Instead, Gardner says he had to rely on God. She went in the closet and prayed mm -hmm. and got the answer. Prayer is powerful. Gardner says soon after, a blue butterfly landed on his hand and stayed there for nearly two hours. And I walked around that compound and held conversations with people and that butterfly stayed on my hand the, the entire time. When it flew away, it went right over the barbed wire, out of the prison gate. A week later, he stood before the federal judge that set him free. And he said, don't thank me. He said, I didn't do anything that shouldn't have been done 27 years ago. He said, look, I did what was right.